Lloyd started off the episode as usual, heading to the office, meeting up with Ricky on the route. It was time for some tough conversations about what he and Manu had been up to on these increasingly frequent trips down to the wastes and under city. Lloyd has a lot to handle right now. The warp gates have closed, and it's slowly setting in that until he resolves the current crisis, he has no hope of ever returning back home. But what can he do? Down beneath his feet, the planet itself is a giant synth named Titan that hates all organic life. Up above his head, well, the corpse is still none the wiser on how to counter the intergalactic alien threat. One that could surface at any time now Saniti jump and access codes have been compromised. He's caught between a giant death planet rock and a Xeno invasion fleet hard place. And that's before you get to his day job. As tensions rise, public compliance with COP authority is likely to go down. Len can feel it in the air. Saviour City is a tank of gasoline just waiting for some slum terrorist fuck to light the whole thing ablaze. If Woto on Corvanis 3 is going to survive this and come out on top, they need to be acting as a unit, display leadership, make the hard decisions that only a corp exec can make. Ricky's recent actions have been the direct risk to that, and as a result, everything that Len had worked for. The first revelation was on the true nature of Manu, or Otto, now, as Len has been told. He knew there was some sort of personality thing going on in Manu's head, but he could have never guessed this. Turns out the man, Manu, has a rare condition that means his body can't maintain itself without electrical charge. Apparently, Tilaris' answer to this was to push an elemental ID as Otto into his body as some sort of sick experiment to see if they could cohabitate a single flesh bag. Seems to be working out for them so far, but it's a lot for Len to take in. Good to finally get closure of why exactly Manu is so cautious of Talaris personnel, if nothing else. He asks if this means that Talaris could possibly cast some voodoo and turn him hostile to Woto operatives on a joint mission. They do specialise in spirits after all. Leonard didn't get the answer he wanted. Next up is Ricky. The boss rat levelled with Len about his excursions. He said there was some sort of spiritual force that was compelling him to visit odd areas of the city and wastes to meet up with some odd collection of weirdos who'd had a similar call. Why? Ricky couldn't say. How did this benefit Woto? No answer. What are we going to do with this information that could lead to a practical course of action going forwards? Nothing obvious. This rat man has been summoned by some unknown entity, raising Leonard's blood pressure and risking corporate crackdown, all to find out that Thaddeus was scary. An utterer and absolute waste of time. The spirit, whatever it is, needs to die. And the only man who happens to be able to back Ricky up happens to also be an elemental. Curious, Leonard thinks. Very curious indeed. Len can't take any direct action without Goldman present, so he plays it cool and tries to relate to these two. Says he'd had signals too, visions from Thaddeus or the Xenos or whatever it is. He makes a veiled ultimatum that this either turns into an actionable plan that they can sell to Goldman, or he's out. 
Concluding the meeting, he heads out to see Alec, the head of Siniti on Corvanis III, standing at the front gate. He asks if Len has any more leads, and lets him know they are good to go ahead with a plan to isolate a specimen of this Xeno ooze for weapons testing. Len doesn't give him anything, and starts to discuss broader plans to execute the mission before they are interrupted by a broadcast alert. Astral have PID'd a highly wanted terrorist by the name of Gregor Lock Brunswick, and are calling out for all troops to mobilise. Lock. The name rings out in Leonard's mind, and he heads for a terminal straight away to confirm his suspicions. Turns out, this little test of Astral's loyalties was a better move than he had planned. Leonard knew the man was somehow connected to the Retribution, but the Commander... Now this was worse and better than he could have imagined. A commander of one of the largest anti-corp ships in the Unification War had been living in Saviour City for at least a year. And not only that, his roots clearly ran deep within the criminal underbelly of the city. It is impossible that someone in the Union Tower didn't know about this. Leonard was still sore and suspicious about how one of them was bellowing orders to Sinidi and himself the previous day on Sinidi grounds about one of Oto's guards. Clearly, they were feeling confident. And now, Len thinks he knows why. There's a GU meeting coming up. It's time to ask some very pressing questions. Aiming to rally others to his cause, Leonard headed up around to talk with the other heads of security about the threat that the Union currently poses to corp safety. He heads to Talaris first. Jeremiah is new to the upper city and seems quick to see the sense in Len's way of thinking. Len also takes the opportunity to ask if there is some way that he can find out if he can detect if someone's been influenced or controlled by a spirit. Damien asks for names, and says the easiest way is to bring someone in front of him. No, no, no. Not yet. Not without Goldman here. He then heads over to speak to Blaine at Sinidi HQ. Despite clearly being closely under watch, with their Mars brand attack bot hovering behind him the entire time, Blaine also sees the saints in Leonard's thinking, and pledges his aid to the cause. Next up on the list was Mars, but with no one about, he leaves a message to pass up to one of the superiors. Then I'll be following up by email too, but he has no doubt of their allegiance on this. Finally then, there was Nirvana, and this is where it all came down. They have no head of security at present, and it fucking shows. This Alice character completely failed to understand the severity of the situation. Asked for more time to get more information, as if any were actually needed. Kept pleading with Len not to take action until a second meeting at the end of the next business day. Len told her there was no time. Fool was even stupid enough to ask what difference can a day make when talking about highly competent Shadowrunners and then had the nerve to try and exert authority over Len, even after he brought up Sinidi and Talaris were already on side. Clearly this one has skin in the game and cannot be trusted. Either that, or they're just unbelievably weak. Len told her what would happen if they didn't act fast. That they'd have to send in the squads and enforce starvation measures to try and root this insurrection out. Though they'd have to torture people and do everything they could to maintain control in advance of the Xeno threat. She said we shouldn't do anything extreme. Len told her this wasn't. Leaving the compound, Len skipped Atlantis. He's got no relationship with that lot. And as far as he's concerned, Kyote can go fuck themselves. 
than the probably compromised to boot. Meeting up with Ricky again, it turned out that Thaddeus and these zombies had been seen again in the undersea. The shit was going down. More than this though, he revealed that a Nirvana employee had let loose high-grade corporate secrets in regards to the Lazarus Protocol to the Union. The top secret nanite project that allowed corpse to essentially return from the dead. Is the highest ranking official present? Ricky was asked what to do with the traitor, who had been promptly killed by a Nirvana agent. Ricky ruled that the individual should be able to reconstitute for questioning at Nirvana HQ. After a quick, I told you so, in regards to not being safe in the undersea. We headed straight to their bod room to level with the new Nirvana head, a man named Amma, about the severity of the situation. Leonard recommended immediate execution for both the traitor and the union reps he had informed, and torture if the names of those union members were not forthcoming. This individual had put the lives of every executive court member at risk, and he was not about to let that go unanswered. Amos seemed to understand, but after his run-in with Alice, he was less than sure. He parted ways with a simple statement. We're watching you. All of us. Moving out, Leonard and Ricky discussed their next steps. Leonard said he was hoping to call by Atlantis, start seeing if they can control the narrative on both Locke and the Xeno threat, make sure everything remains shiptight. But they were interrupted by news that the councilmen of Scraptown had been delivered to the upper city, as per Len's request. Ricky took charge of dealings with Atlantis whilst Len headed back to deal with these visitors. Glad to have someone else to deal with the media. It had never been something he was happy doing. And whilst he had his misgivings with Ricky right now, the rat had shown initiative in having the traitor killed, and he had backed his calls for torture and execution. He was sure that even if he may be going soft, that he'd make a good case to Atlantis. It was all in aid of keeping casualties down, after all. Talks with the Wastelanders were about as tense as you'd expect. But Leonard was eager to put a bit of faith in Simon's advice and see if something could be sorted out. They had refrained from taking out Ricky and Manu in their recent forays, after all, and they still had Mercury. The synth with the weapon plans that could be the key to fighting off the Xeno threat. He made the case that this was something bigger than the typical Wastelander corp animosity and that working with them on this was in their interest. For the price of a tank or a diesel, and a hit squad on a radar that had been causing them troubles, they were willing to enter something of a tenuous relationship. We'll see if that ends up bearing any fruit. But the real value of the meeting was let slip by the larger of the two councilmen. The one-handed brute said that Titan was dead, so far as he believed. He recounted a strange tale of corpses being animated by nanites into cyber zombies, of wastelanders being dragged off by synths to sacrifice to Titan. Sacrifice is a powerful word. It's got connotations to it that Leonard will be keen to explore, but not nearly as many connotations as something else this man let slip. Two words which Len is going to be thinking about for a good long while. Control Room Hi, this is Leo here just talking in his normal voice. I'm so sorry that the audio for this particular recording is so scuffed. Um, I would upload the full thing, but it's not recoverable, I'm afraid. I'll be making double sure to check in future. I'm not sure what messed it up, whether it was a Windows update, whether it was something that has changed in OBS. This is all very new to me. 
And so is just the incredible level of support that I've had for playing this character and for just my involvement in Callus Row in general. Um, it's been a very scary thing to go from being a complete unknown with a couple of friends who run a couple of streams every now and then to suddenly being in the limelight of particularly Kraken and Lawman's audience as well as all of the others. Some of the viewership on Callus Row has been crazy. It's uh, very frightening being in front of so many people who are scrutinizing your every move at every time, particularly when it comes to potentially killing people's favorite streamers, etc. So I just want to say thanks uh, so much and apologize for scuffing this up this time. I do still intend to be streaming again. Uh, I've put in a big expensive order for a new motherboard, new processor, new cooling and all that sort of shit. Um, I put it in as of the 14th of February. Uh, that was uh, what I did for COVID Valentine's Day. Hope you had a better time. Uh, things have been really hard in terms of getting tech parts to the UK at the moment. I know that from both my real life job and just other things that I've ordered throughout the year, be it due to COVID, be it due to Brexit, be it due to just shortages generally in terms of how much is being produced at the moment. I was really hoping to be up and streaming again now. Um, I really hope to at least be able to do it by the time for Lens ever more inevitable demise. But I just wanted to take this opportunity to apologize, to say I am working on it and to say that I hope that making this and putting this together some way mitigates any disappointment that has been caused by me fucking this one up. So um, thank you all for your support. I'll, uh, I'll do better next time. Have a great evening, and I hope you're enjoying the show.